Hello and welcome to my channel. Welcome to my living room. <laughs> we very rarely film indoors, but today I wanted to talk all about how to clean and store your camping gear. So we're heading into those winter months where you might be storing your gear for longer periods of time. So this is a great opportunity to talk about this. So I've brought all my gear inside <laughs> after a trip. And my first tip is to make sure that you don't store any of your gear wet or damp. That's gonna be really important. So for something like your tent, for example, if it is damp or wet, anything like that, you wanna make sure that you take it out of here when you get home and let it dry completely. You can do this in your backyard. I live in a small condo, so I don't have a backyard, so I have to get a little bit creative about how I spread things out and let them dry. So for example, I'll hang things from a pull-up bar, I'll hang things over you know, my chair in the office, over the shower curtain rod. You know, So there's a lot of different ways that you can do it depending on your space, but you do just wanna make sure that your tent is completely dry and all your other gear are completely dry before you're actually storing it. Now, even if it's not raining on your trip, it's very common for your tent to be damp. You have things like dew or condensation that can build up overnight. And if you pack things up first thing in the morning, your tent might be damp when you arrive at home. Ideally, if I have the time on a camping trip, I like to let the sun rise and let the sun just completely dry out my tent before I pack it up and leave. But sometimes if you have to leave early in the morning, you might not be able to do that, so you have to let it dry at home. Next, we have our sleeping bag. So when you get home from your trip, again, you wanna make sure that it is completely dry. There's, it's not damp in any way. I mean, your sleeping bag shouldn't really be getting wet, but if there's any dampness, completely let it air dry and then store it. When it comes to storing your sleeping bag, the biggest tip that I have for you is do not store your sleeping bag compressed, right? So this is an example of something that's not compressed. I have this big sack that my sleeping bag actually came with, and this is how I store it. I put it in my closet, just like this. I know this takes up quite a bit of room compared to when it's compressed down, but you never wanna store your sleeping bag compressed like that, especially if it's a down sleeping bag. So use a big pillowcase if you have one or a big sack like this to store your dry sleeping bag. Next, we have the camping pantry bin. I have a dedicated video all about my pantry bin, what it is, how I use it, why it's so great. I will link to that in the description below the video so you can check that out. But when I get home from a trip, I'll open up my pantry bin and I remove any food that is perishable or opened. So a lot of this stuff is unopened, like these boxes of mac and cheese. I have ramen, all that stuff. So I'll just leave that there, but these graham crackers are open. So stuff like that, I will remove. Sometimes I have apples in here for an easy snack while I'm camping. I'll remove those apples, of course, because I don't want them to rot and go bad in here. Avocados, things like that. You of course want to remove from this bin. And a couple times a year, I'll actually take everything out of here and I'll wipe it down and just make sure that there's no crumbs or dirt kind of building up in the bottom of this bin, reorganize it and make sure it's just, yeah, nice and organized and clean. I don't do that after every single camping trip, but it's something that I do a couple times throughout the year before storing your gear for longer periods of time, maybe through the winter, that's a great time to do a deeper clean of these bins. But again, it's really simple. One of the things I just love about the pantry bin system is that this stuff is kind of just ready to go for my next trip. It's really easy to, to care for and keep this clean. Once I've removed all the perishable and opened foods from here, I latch it shut and I will store this in my closet. Next we have back here. Uh, Nick, a battery low error. I don't know if it's still recording. Next up we have the camping kitchen bin. So this is where I put all of my camp kitchen gear. Everything is organized in here, always ready to go. I know where to find things like plates and bowls, utensils, my pan, my spatula all that stuff. But when I get home from a trip, I will again open this up, make sure everything in here is clean and dry, 
and a couple times throughout the year i'll take everything out and do a deeper clean because they're just like dirt and stuff that kind of builds up on the bottom of these bins and so i want to make sure that it's nice and clean for the next time i go camping but overall it's very easy to care for as long as everything is just clean and dry <laughs> A couple times throughout the year, I also clean my camping stove. I'll bring that inside, take it apart, and really wipe down the area around the burners because when you're cooking a lot at camp, that area tends to get kind of dirty. So a couple times throughout the year, I will take the time to really give that a good clean as well. The next thing I wanna talk about are the water jugs. So for these, they're difficult to to clean, right, and to dry, because I obviously can't fit my hand in there. So what I do with these is I get home and I let all of the water out as much as I can, and then I will leave it in my, like on a shelf in my office, uncovered or un uncapped. <laughs> and so that there's some airflow that can go in here and eventually it does dry out. Uh, just kind of takes a while, but I'll just store it like this. So yeah, that there's airflow in there. This one is a little bit, I mean, I do the same thing with this one, but it's just kind of harder because you can't actually see in here to see how wet or dry it is. But again, they do dry out eventually, and that's really all I do for these. As long as they're uh, getting dry, I've never had any sort of mold or gross buildup in these. And again, I only put clean water, clean drinking water in them. So just letting them completely dry is all that I really do for these. I suppose you could do a deeper clean, but I've really actually never used soap or scrubbed these in any way and I've been fine. So that's how I do it for the water jugs. So those are the important things that I am thinking about and cleaning when it comes to my camping gear. Again, you just want everything to be dry and you don't want to be storing your sleeping bag compressed. Now I want to talk a little bit about actually where to store your gear. So where you store your gear is going to depend on where you're living and the space that you have available to you. So for example, I, like I mentioned, live in a small condo. So there's not a lot of options when it comes to storing my gear. For my pantry bin and my camping bin, I stack them up and I store them in a small little closet <laughs> that has some other coats. And then for all my other gear, I store it in a closet in our office. And that's just the only space that I really have to store this stuff. So it's all inside my condo. I live in Utah, we do not have a humid climate. And so that is perfect for my camping gear. Now my parents are going to be a good example of what you don't want to do with your camping gear. So my parents live out on the East Coast where it is very, very humid. So one, that climate is just more damp than it is out here in Utah. And their garage is kind of half underground because their house is built on a slight hill. So the garage is just very dark, musty, damp, and not the kind of place that you want to be storing your camping gear. But that's exactly where my parents did store their camping gear. And I visited them a couple years ago and I wanted to look through their camping gear because I was going to go camping and it was all just pretty much ruined sitting in that dark, damp environment for a long time. So for them, I would recommend that they bring all of their camping gear inside and find a closet in their home that's a little bit more temperature controlled than this dark, damp, humid uh, garage that they have. So that's kind of an example of what you don't wanna do. You have to assess, of course, where you're living and the space that's available to you. But yeah, just try to avoid any damp environments like that. So that's what I've got for you on how to clean and store your camping gear. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure to give it a like. That really supports my channel and consider subscribing because I upload new videos all about camping every single week here on YouTube. And I'd love to see you in the next one.